Come on in. Welcome to Idle Now, where we talk all things Survivor. My name is Luke, and today we're talking about five classic Survivor challenges I'd like to see again in the new era. The recent appearance of Last Gasp in Survivor 43 was delightful, and I've been thinking a lot lately about how refreshing it was to see such a beloved challenge from Survivor's past make such an unexpected return. Similar to the game is afoot in Survivor 41 and Samotion in Survivor 42, Last Gasp in 43 was a great mix-up to the sometimes sameness of modern challenges. I think 43 was a step in the right direction challenge-wise, but there are still more classic challenges from Survivor's past I'd love to see make an appearance. For this video, I decided to keep my list realistic. Survivors understandably shied away from challenges with high risk of injury or lots of physical contact between players, so I won't be including some past favorites like sumo at sea, kicking and screaming, or even things like by the numbers, which is non-violent but requires lots of physical touching between players nonetheless. Survivor's also done away with endurance challenges that can go for hours so as to keep the production schedule, so I won't be including pure endurance challenges that can theoretically go forever, like Hands on a Hard Idol. Again, I want to keep this to past classics that could realistically appear in the future. Finally, in the comments, let me know what realistic past challenges you want to see in Survivor's new era, and maybe we can talk about the people's choices in the future. For now though, let's take a look at five classic survivor challenges that I'd like to see make a new era come back. At number five is slip, slide, and score. This is a classic challenge that was first seen in Survivor Fiji, so why not bring it home? This is a tribal reward or immunity challenge with one of my personal favorite tribal challenge formats the one-on-one -on -one heat. A representative from each tribe takes the stage, lubes up, and throws themselves down an oiled track to retrieve a specific numbered ball or ring, then at the end toss said ball or ring into a basket or onto a hook. Some of Survivor's best challenges have just been novel spins on simple backyard games, and this is basically Survivor slip and slide. What I really love about this challenge is the juxtaposition between right before the challenge and during it. The oiling up phase of the challenge is a crowd pleaser. There's something for everyone here. Then the actual challenge itself can look cool, but quite often look silly if the players don't propel themselves far enough. Look at them. Then the ring or ball toss is just classic horse race survivor. While we haven't seen this one since Survivor Cambodia, I suspect we'll see this one again sooner rather than later. There's no downside from a production point of view. The one-on-one -on -one heats can help disadvantage tribes if they're strategic in their matchups. It costs very little money, and most importantly, everyone looks good, all oiled up. At number four is an original season one reward challenge, Mud Pack. Maybe I just like challenges where the survivors need a bath afterwards. This challenge has since been used in a few additional seasons, but things don't come more low budget than a bucket and a pile of mud. In this timed individual challenge, the players must race out to a mud pit, collect as much mud as they can on their bodies, and deposit the mud in a bucket. You can't carry mud in your arms or hands, you can only carry mud on your body. Whoever has the most mud in their bucket wins. That's it, that's the challenge. There's just something about this challenge that's a joy to watch. I know this isn't necessarily the challenge itself's doing, but each version of this challenge has produced an incredibly memorable reward, too. In Survivor Borneo, this was the classic reward where Jeff took the winner on a blind date to a fake bar, where he downed some Bud Lights with Kelly and offered her a smoke. Cigarettes if you're so inclined. In Survivor Cook Island, Yule, Ozzy, and Parvati won this challenge, resulting in the most awkward hot tub date since I was last in a hot tub. And in Survivor Kageyan, Tony won this pizza reward, and okay, that one wasn't as memorable, but we did learn that he eats like a duck. I'm really not sure why this challenge hasn't been seen since then. Tony did quote unquote beat the challenge by getting his bucket to overflow, but I don't know. I feel like there are bigger buckets out there you could get. Come to think of it, there's gotta be some small town in some southern state that like prides itself on having the biggest bucket or something. Just go there. Hi, Luke in editing here. I was actually so curious that I Googled it. It appears there are two small towns in southern states claiming to have the world's biggest bucket and they have beef over it. 
So Survivor Challenge producers can go to either Oxford, Mississippi or Murfreesboro, Tennessee if they need some big buckets. Idled out. Come for the Survivor facts. Stay for the bucket facts. At number three is The Mixer. It's shocking to me that we've only seen this challenge two times in Survivor Amazon and Survivor All-Stars. I don't know anyone who doesn't love this challenge. This pre-merge reward challenge is basically just go fish, but the challenge shines because of the interactions between the castaways. Basically, if casting did their job right, and they usually do, this challenge is a slam dunk in the entertainment department. In the challenge, each player is given a box containing a handful of random items. In a randomly selected order, they ask another player for an item, trying to get a match. If they have the item, they gotta give it up to you, and you score a point for your tribe. The tribe with the most matches at the end of the game wins. This has already proven a hit in the three tribe format in Survivor All-Stars, but you could also adapt it so that players have to get three matching items instead of a pair. Memory challenges are pretty hit or miss on Survivor for me, and at first glance you'd think this one would be on the miss side because the audience can't play along at home. That's usually a pretty important component for memory challenges to be actually fun to watch. But that really doesn't matter here because the cross-tribe interactions and friendly trash talk it's produced in both of its iterations have been so entertaining that the audience doesn't even need to be able to play along at home. They can just enjoy the ride. Pretty boy. Who's pretty boy? Wow, he looked right at me. Must be Zon. Ethan. You got a rock in there? You got a couple up here, don't you? From the audience perspective, this is really a challenge less about actual memorization and more about watching a great cast have fun with each other. And incidentally, this challenge was probably the last time anyone had any fun in All Stars at all. At number two is Hot Pursuit. Those last three were all fun reward challenges. So to balance things out, let's get into the most punishing tribal immunity challenge in history. Hot Pursuit is one of those rare endurance challenges that pops up at the tribal stage of the game, and it's never disappointed. Debuting in Survivor Palau, this challenge is about as simple as they come. The survivors are harnessed together single file and each given a 20 pound bag. Then each team is placed on opposite ends of an oval course, typically in knee or ankle high water, and the first tribe to catch the other tribe wins. What makes this really interesting is that this is a team challenge, but tribes can be carried by two or three strong and determined players. At any point, players can opt out of the challenge and pass off their share of the weight to another player, opening up a lot of strategic opportunities and on-the-fly judgment calls on when you retire your weaker or slower tribe mates. You could also try the Phillips strategy and just walk the whole thing, hoping that the other tribe gets tired, and... Oh, actually don't try that. Every part of this challenge is designed to push players to the absolute limit physically, and this is probably the survivor challenge I think I'd least like to participate in, other than the ones where you can, you know, die. I have seen criticism that once a tribe gets ahead, it's just a slow march to victory, but I'm not sure I agree. You simply do not know how long the challenge is going to last, and there's always hope, even if you're falling behind, that one of the players on the other team will drop or they'll run out of gas, giving you an opening to get some distance. This would have to be altered for three tribes in the new era, like a triangle-shaped pond or something, but I'd love to see it make a comeback. I particularly would have liked to have seen Survivor 42's Jonathan perform in this challenge. Dude could probably solo this thing. At number one is Touchy Subjects. No, calm down Dan, not like that. This is a challenge testing your knowledge of tribal dynamics, last seen in a slightly altered form in Survivor San Juan del Sur. Low budget and guaranteed drama, this is an individual challenge in which the survivors privately fill out a survey about the remaining players in the game, then Jeff asks said questions to the survivors. They must answer the name of the player who they believe was written down most often, and for each correct answer, the players will get to chop the rope of someone else. Once you receive three chops, you're out. This is a great early to mid-merge challenge for a number of reasons. It tests players' pulse on tribal dynamics, and there's also a lot of strategy in knowing whose rope to chop and when. At best, it can help players on the bottom of a majority realize that they're on the bottom. And even if not, someone's feelings are guaranteed to get hurt. I mean, these questions aren't exactly 
who has the nicest smile or who's the best dressed. Most of them are intended to cause a lot of friction. Who do you hope you never see again? Who is the most entitled? Who would you least like to see win? Who smells the worst? These are all real questions that were asked. But of course, there's my personal favorite, who is the biggest poser? What is a poser? The answer to what is a poser is you. Okay, that was a gimme. Unfortunately, this challenge disappeared after the San Juan del Sur cast. Playing an altered form of this challenge started throwing it to Missy in an incredibly obvious and obnoxious way, overly metagaming something that was never intended to be taken this seriously. But I think so many years removed from that, and with casts largely consisting of super fans who would be beyond excited to play in this challenge, I don't think that problem would arise again. Here's why it should come back. This is a major fan favorite challenge, it always delivers fireworks, and most importantly, it's the only individual challenge Ceri's ever won. You don't like hate Ceri, do you? Got nothing else for ya. Next week, we'll be taking a look at five classic survivor challenges that should stay in the past, so be sure to check that out. Until next time, don't get idled out.